Today we look at setting up OctoPrint to monitor and control your 3D printer from anywhere with your phone. Almost everyone who owns a 3D printer knows that OctoPrint is great for controlling your printer and sending it G-code. If you need to know how to get started with OctoPrint, you can check out this video here. What makes it even cooler is if you can monitor your 3D printer from wherever you go. This can be achieved by opening up some ports on your network router to allow access in from the outside. The problem is there's so many different router options out there, it can be hard to know how to set up your configuration. Today, we're gonna to go through a couple of different router types, get them set up to monitor your 3D printer on the go with your phone via a sleek web plugin app. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to know is your router's default IP. This is how you access your router to be able to configure it. Most of the time, you can easily get this by Googling your router's make and model number. For this example, we'll do the classic Linksys WRT router. And we'll just search for default IP. The default IP is 192.168.1.1. This is the most common default IP that you're going to find for a home-based network router. You will also need the credentials for your router. If no one has changed those credentials, you can search for those as well. We'll just search for default password. The default username and password are both admin for this router. If something were to happen and you don't know what your IP is or your username and password, you can reset back to the default factory options with this button here. Be careful when resetting a router like this because you are going to lose all the custom settings that you might have had in the router. So the first router we're going to look at today is an Asus router. The default IP for this router is the most common one, 192.168.1.1. We'll direct our web browser to that IP, and then we'll be asked for a username and password. Either use the default or the one that you've changed it to. And now we're logged into the router. Look for a section on the screen that says something like WAN or virtual network. For this router, it's an Asus RT-AC66U. I have a WAN tab. And inside that WAN tab, I have a virtual server and port forwarding tab. This is where you can open ports to allow access from outside your firewall. Now we need to know the IP of your OctoPrint server. Most of the time you're going to access your OctoPrint server with the IP anyway or octopi.local. I log into my print server with 192.168.1.182. That's the IP of the print server. If you don't know what the IP of your OctoPrint server is, you can get that from your router. Look for something that says network map or DHCP list. We'll go to network map. And here on the front page is a list of all the clients. Hit view list. Go through the list until you see something called Octopi or Octoprint. These are the print servers. It should list the IP of your print server. Again, mine is 192.168.1.182. Most of these IPs in this list are gonna be set up DHCP. That's when the router hands an IP to that device, but that IP can change. It makes it hard to forward ports if you don't know what the IP is. What I recommend is either setting the IP to a static IP on your OctoPrint server or using a router option to make sure that that IP never changes. On my router, if you go to LAN, DHCP server, you can manually assign a specific device to a specific IP, which is what I've done here. This OctoPi is manually set to always be 192.168.1.182. This can save you a lot of headache going forward. Now that we know the IP, let's head back to the WAN tab. We'll go to virtual server and port forwarding. We'll pick a service name. This can be anything you want. We're just gonna call it OctoPrint. The source target, if you have that option, can usually be left blank. The port range column is the port that you access the Octopi from from the outside. The default web port is port 80, but if you use port 80, that's gonna leave you open to a lot of web traffic. I recommend you use a higher port number, one that doesn't get used by a common service. This makes the connection safer because those ports don't get sniffed very often. You can use any port number up to 65,000 in some. So what I would recommend is something like 55,000. Local IP is the IP of your OctoPrint server. And local IP is the port that the OctoPrint actually uses, which the OctoPrint default port is 80. And we'll add that entry. 
Now if you've used the multi instance Octoprint install, you can also set those instances up as well. So let's call the second one Octoprint 1. Just select another dynamic port. For this one we'll use 55001. It would be the same IP because it's on the same Octoprint server. It's just on a different port. So use the port that you assign during the multi instance install. For mine, 5001. And we'll click apply. Now you need to know what your external IP is to be able to access your network from outside your network. The easiest thing to do is just go to Google and ask it, what's my IP? This is from inside your home network. It will report your external IP here. So now we're over to the cell phone. The easiest way for you to test if this worked is to get off your wireless network and onto your cellular network. This way you can test coming in from outside your home network. So we'll shut off wireless. We'll open up the Chrome web browser. We'll use the IP from the What's My IP website with the dynamic port number that we chose tagged onto the end of it. Mine was 55,000. And there's your Octoprint server. You can try 55,001. That's your secondary instance of your Octoprint server. And there's another instance of Octoprint. It works just the same. So this is all fine and good. You can use your Octoprint server, but everything's kind of hard to read from your phone. That's where the Touch UI plugin comes in. From the PC, we'll head back into 192.168.1.182. That's our Octoprint server. We'll go to Settings. We'll go to Plugin Manager. Scroll to the bottom and click Get More. And then search for Touch. You'll find a plugin called Touch UI. Click Install. Restart your Octoprint instance. Back to the cell phone and we'll refresh by going to that outside IP and that port number again. And when you reload, you see this much easier to use interface. If you pull down the menu on the top right, you can go to Login. And now you have access to all the same features you would from your regular web GUI. Now let's jump over and take a look at a Linksys router, 192.168.1.1. We'll enter in the default username and password, admin, admin. And this is what the older version of the Linksys firmware looked like. On these models, you'd go to the application and gaming tab and enter your Octoprint server information here. Octoprint port 80, port 80, 182. Check enabled and click save. With this type of router, this is less secure because you can't hide behind a dynamic port address. So you will be on port 80 where most web traffic is. But you could use your alternate instances of Octoprint to make things a little safer. We'll do Octoprint 1, 5001, 5001, same IP. Now we'll take a look at a TrendNet router. Again, a little older model, but a few of these might still be around. Check out the Access tab, and then click on Virtual Server. Here's where you can enter your Octoprint information. We'll click Enabled, Octoprint. These are all TCP ports. The private port is 80. The public port will make it our dynamic port number, 55,000, and then the IP of that Octoprint server. And we'll click Add. Now you can see it in the list. Again, you can just keep adding your other instances on different port numbers. Now we'll look at a Belkin router. It's a little trickier. Its default IP is 192.168.2.1. We'll go underneath the firewall section. We'll go into virtual servers. Enter your password. We'll enable an entry. We'll call it Octoprint. Your inbound port will be your dynamic part, 55,000. Select your IP, 182, and your private port, 80. Again, you can add your alternate instances of Octoprint underneath that. And hit Apply Changes. There's a couple things I wanted to mention or go over one more time. Make sure you always enable authentication on your Octoprint server. You don't want anybody to be able to access that server should they happen to find your IP and port number. Try to stay in the upper dynamic port ranges. Anything above 50,000 in between 65,000 is probably a good choice. If you want to use something else, just look up if that's a registered port or not. You want to use static IPs as much as possible, both for your internal and external IPs. Your external is going to be a little more difficult 
but you might look into something like dynamic DNS as a service to help control this. And with your internal IPs, you can set them physically on the device or use your router's options to make sure they never change. Now I know I didn't cover every router out there and internet companies can make things interesting with their modem slash router appliances, but this should give you some groundwork on how to get your setup configured. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.